Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz and welcome to the program today. I've got good news for you. If you're agitated and irritated, if you're uh, dissatisfied, if you have had all the bad news you can take, you've come to the right place. We're going to give you good news. And good news will cheer you up and fill you up and edify you. And the Apostle Paul said it'll give you your inheritance. You know, it's the precious promises of God that allow us to obtain the blessings of God. So there's so much communicated through God's Word to us. I believe, I, I strongly believe in gospel recordings, whether it be audio or video or live teaching. You know, we just need the good news. We need the Word of God imparted to our lives. It changes us like nothing else. It's like fuel for your tank. I like to say it this way. We're going to put into you what life takes out prepare you to face life again. I want this program to be full of the Word, full of encouragement, and full of spiritual uh, nutrition, spiritual fuel that you can use that'll make you a better Christian, a better father, a mother, a better student, a better professional. In any area of life, the Word of God makes us better. It strengthens us. It renews our mind. So I, I just believe that you've come to the right place today. We're studying Jesus. Jesus our Savior. And if you would like to download study notes, we have those for you on our website. And you can go there, gregfritz.org, and you can download these study notes. I have a lot of, uh, of good products on there, a lot, of, a lot of free things, a lot of articles and things that I've placed on there for your benefit. So you may want to come, uh, come by and visit us on our website. We have a Facebook page as well. We're going to actually get the good news out in every way possible. And uh, so, uh, you know, look for us out there. We're kind of new at this. Uh, I'm an old school preacher. I've been traveling for almost 30 years all over the world. I preach in person. I've preached in more places than I can remember. I've preached to more people than I can remember. I've preached for hours and hours in a day. And I've traveled for hours and hours to preach one hour in a day. So I've done it every which way, but I tell you what, I love the miracle of modern technology. I love the fact that I can come to you today, wherever you are, from right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I didn't have to stand in line. I didn't have to get delayed. I didn't have to go through security. But we are going to get into the Word of God, and I believe these things are going to help you and possibly change your life. So let's go back now to Matthew chapter 10. We are talking about Jesus, and I, I didn't want to take a lot of time on this portion of our study, but why Jesus is a polarizing figure? Why is the world so divided on the issue, and why is there so much emotion? I mean, there's a lot of emotion today in, in a lot of different areas, especially politics. But the Jesus issue is more important than all of them combined. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 24, Jesus said, A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher, and a servant like his master. In other words, he's saying, you're never going to outperform Jesus. Uh, you want to be like him. If, if, you know, we, we can be like him in a lot of ways, but we're never going to be above him. In other words, we're not going to uh, get beyond the things he faced beyond the enemies that he dealt with. We're going to deal with the things that he dealt with. And this specifically is this. He said, If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? They literally said Jesus was a devil. That's a tremendous amount of hatred toward a man who never did anything wrong. And so this Jesus, the person of Jesus, cannot be a neutral subject. The world and the people have to decide on the Jesus issue. And sometimes we need to present Jesus. We need to push this because it's very important that people know who He is and have an opportunity to accept or reject Him. Then in verse 26, Therefore do not fear them. He's basically just saying this. If you take a stand for Jesus, people are, there's going to be people that aren't going to like you. And, and what he's trying to do is prepare us. He's saying, I, I just want to get you ready. I don't want you to be soft. I don't want you to be caught off guard. 
Listen, there are causes everywhere. People take stands all the time, and we shouldn't let the world take a stand on a worldly issue that is of minor importance and sacrifice and, and, and accept the fact that people reject them over it, and then we're not willing to do that with Jesus. There is a certain amount of pushback. There's a certain amount of persecution that comes with Jesus. And he's just warning us. <laughs> he's telling us that that's normal. It's not unusual. Verse 26, Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. So that's good advice. And, and we, we want to go on now to, to verse 34 because he continues this theme. And I really want to help people out there that maybe you've become a Christian recently and You've, your, your world was turned upside down. You know, things have happened that you didn't expect. I would like to tell you that if you get right with God, the birds are going to sing, the people are going to, the, the angels are going to sing, that the people are going to surround you and become all supportive and applaud you. Uh, your relatives are all going to be happy for you. But that's just not reality. When you accept Jesus, you take a side, you take a stand and some people react to that negatively. Jesus is saying, look, they called me a devil. If you think you're going to be popular just because of your outstanding personality or your outstanding spiritual development, you're deceiving yourself. There is a natural persecution. We're going to talk about why that is. But right now, let's just make this point that not everybody's going to love you just because you love them. And not everybody's going to love you because you love Jesus. In fact, it's the opposite. There are people that are going to absolutely reject you if you accept Jesus. That's the nature of the person. That's how important he is. He, he's that important. He is the most important figure, and his identity is the most important subject in the world. Nothing even comes close. As I've said before, if you get the Jesus question right, it really won't matter in a thousand years how much else you got wrong. You're going to be in heaven rejoicing forever and ever and ever. But if you get this question wrong, it doesn't really matter what else you get right. That's how important his identity is. That's why we're here to set the record straight. You know, I wish Jesus would come here and preach his own message because he could do it so much better than me. I wish Jesus would reveal himself to the world in person, but he chose not to. He chose to do the work. He did what we couldn't do. He defeated the enemies we couldn't defeat. He purchased redemption that we had no way to purchase. But then he said, I'm going to go on to heaven and I'm going to let you tell the world what I did. That's not a burden. That's a privilege. What an honor. And if people don't like it, and some won't, that just goes with the territory. You know, there are many people out there that just really aren't living for anything. If you want to get behind something, if you want to go surrender your life to a cause, there's no cause greater than Jesus. This is the, the greatest mission on earth, is to tell people, is to represent the Savior. I've become more and more comfortable and happy and excited about this mission as I've gotten older. I can't think of a better way to spend your life. And it doesn't, you don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be, uh, you know, a, a pastor. You don't have to have a pulpit. You can reveal Jesus in your everyday life, no matter where you are, what you do. You can live a life that represents Him well. And you know, you don't have to, you don't have to come out and preach. Uh, once people know and they, they do find out who you represent, then live a life that's worthy of Him. Live a life that accurately represents who He is. That in itself is a sermon. Isn't that great? You can take your everyday activities and do them for the Lord. People are watching. Oh, even people that don't like you. I've seen it. People who criticize you the most, secretly they're watching to see if you make it. They want to know if it's real. First of all, they're offended that you, that you love something so much, that you're devoted to a cause, and maybe they're not. But secondly, you know, they want to know, is it real? Does it really work? Or is this just another fad? Is this just another hobby? Is this just another 
uh, you know, idea that somebody's going to try and give up on. Well, we need to let the world know Jesus is for real. And this is permanent. This isn't just a fad. This is forever. This is eternal. Our relationship with Him is the most important relationship in the world. And so in verse 34 here, Matthew, Matthew chapter 10 says, Jesus said, Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And I want to clarify that because, you know, the angels announced the coming of Jesus and they said it was peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Well, listen, that doesn't mean that the whole world's just going to rally together around Jesus and be one happy family. The peace on earth that Jesus came to bring immediately was peace between God and man because there wasn't. When Adam sinned, it created a barrier. It created enmity between God and man. The way was not made. So there was not peace between God and man. But when Jesus came, He came to remove the barrier and make peace between God and man. That, however, is not extended between men and men, and certainly not between God and the devil. There's still a, a hatred toward God and toward humanity from the evil one. And that's really the source of the strife and the attack and the divisiveness that Jesus causes. But nevertheless, he said it. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Verse 35, Matthew 10. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those are strong words. But what he's saying is there's no relationship more important than the one you have with Jesus. I know other things can creep in and we get busy and he understands all that. But I'll tell you something. There needs to be a loyalty and a love and a devotion to Jesus that goes above and beyond your devotion to anything or anyone else. Total loyalty. I mean, he's Lord. He is God. He is our Savior. No one else is. No one else could be. So he's preaching total devotion. So those of you who maybe you've been saved a short time and you're, you're confused because you have more enemies now than you had before. People, people resent you because of what's happened to you. That is normal. That happens. And, but it's not you. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He was a sinless spotless man. He never, not only did he not sin, but he, he blessed people. He helped people. He did good works. And he was absolutely hated to the point that they falsely condemned him, beat him, and crucified him. That's hatred. That hatred still exists in this world. So there's really no way that the world's going to be one big happy place no matter what we do on this side of heaven, because there is a kingdom of darkness that is arrayed against God and anything that God loves, and God loves people. The, the, the delusion, the deception that I'm concerned that's going to hit our generation is this, that the world's going to gather together and say, you know what, we could be happy, we could be one, we could have unity if we just get rid of Jesus. That's becoming more and more publicly, I believe, acceptable because Jesus doesn't fit in. He, he can't fit in with other religion. You can't men, men uh, mold and change the truth. It is what it is. It does not change. Jesus is truth. Jesus can't be watered down or diluted or added to. That's one of the things they say about preaching the gospel in India. Now, I've not been to India and I've never preached there, but I've read about it. In India, there's over 500 million gods. And if they're not careful, you know, they just add Jesus in, and now they got 501 million gods. Well, he doesn't blend. He doesn't mix. He stands alone. He's the Savior. And because of that, there's this backlash, this, this response that's hatred literal hatred, and he's trying to prepare his followers for this and say, listen, this isn't abnormal, it's very normal. If it happened to me, it's going to happen to you. So there may be division. You may have to lose friends 
You may have to be misunderstood by your family to follow Jesus. Let's look at, at Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. I thought this would fit in here uh, nicely because we're making this point. Why, why is there so much division over Jesus? Why can't the world just all agree? Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Now, that's a, that's a pretty good mission. You would think if you came to the earth, I mean, just take it at face value. Forget about the identity of the characters here, but let's just say some anonymous person came to the planet and he decided, I'm going to do good and I'm going to heal people. I'm going to deliver people. I'm going to feed people. You'd think, wow, you know, that, that will be the most popular, popular human being that ever lived. That, that the whole world would rally around this person who only did good, who healed and delivered. Well, let me read it again. And, and the answer to the hatred, the backlash is in this verse. It says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Who's going to be upset if somebody is delivered who was oppressed by the devil? The devil. And that's really where the rub is. That's where the, the, the source of all the hatred is. Jesus is setting people free from the powers of darkness, sickness, disease, poverty, all of the, the symptoms, the results of sin, Jesus is setting them free. There are people bound by evil spirits right now. And Jesus, through His power, through His followers today, He told us, you go now and preach the gospel. Cast out devils. Lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Same, same mission. Well, who's going to be upset if people start getting delivered from the power of the devil? Not the people who are delivered Man, if you want to see somebody convert, get them delivered from the power of the devil, and they'll, they'll be loyal to the end. It's the devil that gets angry. It's the king. Listen, there's a devil. I, I'm sorry to have to be the one to tell you this, but there is a kingdom of darkness. There is a personality called Satan who rules on this earth, and he hates Jesus. Jesus is undoing everything he did. And the hatred that emanates from Satan and his kingdom, it gets into people. It comes through people. You can see it happen with the Jewish leaders. You know, when Jesus was here, that's who came against him. The common folks, they, they loved him. He fed them. He healed them. They were, he was very popular in certain circles, obviously. But it was the religious people who hated him because the enemy, the, the devil, stirred them up against him. He does the same thing today. There are people that aren't necessarily, uh, you know, trying to be, uh, go against God, but they just hate good. They hate what's going on because they've been, they've been influenced by evil spirits. The Jewish leaders were watching Jesus and they saw him getting people healed. They saw people rallying around him. They saw him claim to be their Messiah. And the enemy was there saying, he's taking all your people. He's an imposter. He's a liar. You've got to fight against him. So there's this, this, this instant animosity between, between the, the Jewish leaders and Jesus. And that's translated today uh, in, in, in different ways, in different walks. But what I'm saying is, look, the hatred that exists toward Jesus and his followers, even if it comes through people, it originates with the devil. There's only one being there's only one kingdom. There's only one type of being that would be offended and angry and, and full of hate because people are getting delivered. You know, e even people in this world that don't care about people, don't, they're okay with people getting delivered. They're fine with you feeding the hungry and they're fine with you clothing the poor and, and doing all these benevolent deeds. Around. And Jesus did even more than that. So who, who's upset with this? It's got to be the devil. It's got to be Satan. It's got to be the kingdom of darkness. That's where the animosity originates. 
but it's reflected through people who are deceived, misled, who believe these lies, and it's directed now at us. Nobody can attack Jesus directly today. They're going to attack his followers. And Jesus was telling us here in Matthew 10 and also in John, which we read in earlier programs, he's telling us that they hated me, they're going to hate you. They called me the devil, they're going to call you the devil. That just goes with the territory. Don't be surprised and don't pull back because people reject your message or reject you because you're a Christian. It's not a time to pull back. Listen, folks, I've said this many times, but we have got to get Jesus out in public. Christians cannot stay in the closet. My point is everybody else has come out of the closet. Everybody else is doing what they do and making it public. We've got to do the same. And there may not be universal support for that, but we've got to go on record. We've got to give Jesus equal time. Because I don't know what the cause is out there, the cause of the day, but I can tell you this, the subject of Jesus is more important. The identity of Jesus is much more important than that. Go to 1 Peter with me if you would, and I'll wrap this teaching today up with this. 1 Peter chapter 3, and this gives us an idea of, of how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. And, and, and I've said it this way before, but they may draw us out of their circle, but we draw them in our circle. Listen, we love everyone. God loves the world. It's not us against them as far as human beings go. God is pro-people. It's really the devil against people. That's where, that's where all the attack comes from. Some people don't understand that and they're deceived and they're caught up in that wrong spirit. But, but we've got to see the truth. We can't resent people that were sent to help. We can't have this antagonism and respond uh, to evil with evil. We can't respond to hatred with hatred. We've got to, we've got to really live by the standards of Christ. You know, he opened not his mouth. As a lamb before his shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. In other words, Jesus didn't defend himself. He didn't, he didn't try to argue, them, argue with them with arguments. And he didn't criticize them when they criticized him. He, he loved and he continued to love and he continued to bless. This is our attitude. This should be our heart posture. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind. Not divided, but one mind. Having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted and be courteous. And that's getting harder and harder to do in a coarse world that we live in. Verse 9, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing. So this, this is the method that Jesus used, and this is what Peter's telling us to do. When they... When they revile you, don't revile them back. When they hate you, don't hate them back. It says, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. We are blessed. We are filled with blessing. We are to relate to the world from that, from that position of being blessed. The world doesn't need a bunch of mean, angry, uh, resentful Christians or preachers. The world doesn't need to, uh, to, to hear that God uh, hates them or mad at them. We don't deal in that currency. We are blessed to be a blessing. When they revile us, when they hate us, listen, we're filled with love. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. We're called to love the world the way God loved the world. So he's trying to tell us here, no matter what they do, you respond with what you have. You know, I was just in Africa and I didn't, hadn't exchanged money at the time. And I, I think I was, I don't know where we were at, a border crossing or something. And I didn't have the, the common currency. I hadn't changed it. And they needed money for something. And I said, well, will you take, uh, will you take U.S. dollars? Because that's all I have is dollars. And, you know, they said, of course, we'll take dollars. We love dollars. We want your dollars. We'd rather have your dollars. And so I gave them dollars, and they were happy with dollars. But that's all I had. I didn't have any other currency. And that was more than enough. 
Listen, folks, what we have is love. That's our currency. We have blessing. We have goodwill. We don't have the other currency, hatred and, and, and disrespect and resentment and unforgiveness. We don't deal in that. We, we haven't exchanged for that. We've been born again. We're filled with the love of God and the life of God and the, and the message of God. And it's good news. That's the currency we have. So when they treat us toward to hatred, we respond. We give them change and love. That's what we have. When they come at us with insults, we give them back love. That's what we have. Let this mind be in you. In other words, and he said this, he said, be of one mind. In other words, let's all be unified on this. When they attack us, because they will. When they hate us, and they will, we respond with love and compassion and a message of mercy and grace. Because that's what we have. We haven't exchanged for anything else. And you know that's a strong position to be in. Isn't that great? Well, I just wanted to encourage you today, no matter what you've given up to serve Jesus, it's worth it all. In fact, he went on to say in Matthew 10, whoever uh, loses his life will find it. There's things you have to lose and give up to serve Jesus, no doubt about it. But man, oh man, it's worth it all. So be blessed today. Make plans to be with us on our next program. And until then, may God's best be yours. Jesus used the Bible to prove who he was to the early church. These same truths can be used today to establish his identity beyond any doubt. Order your copy today of Jesus the Messiah. Visit our website to order at gregfritz.org. Want more good news? Visit our website anytime, gregfritz.org, for more teaching materials. That's gregfritz.org. We want to thank the partners and friends of Greg Fritz Ministries. Your faithful financial support enables us to produce the Good News Program and spread the gospel around the world. If you've been blessed by this program, we invite you to donate and partner with Greg Fritz Ministries. Visit our website, gregfritz.org, and become a partner today. It seems bad news is covering the globe these days, yet God has good news for you that's so good the bad news won't matter anymore. To order your copy of Greg's book, visit our website, gregfritz.org. Coming up next on Good News with Greg Fritz. Here it says, in the beginning was Jesus, Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. So the scriptures do not contradict themselves. Jesus is deity, he's God, he's God the Son. And God Almighty is God the Father and then there's God the Holy Spirit. But Jesus has a special relationship with the, with the creation and he has a special relationship with mankind. And, and that's what we're going to bring out. That's what these scriptures are identifying here is the, the special place that Jesus holds, Jesus the Son, the special place he holds in humanity, in all of creation. And it may be something that you've not seen before. Join us next time for Good News with Greg Fritz.